This week's project is going to be a simple bowl, and I'm using a piece of elm, which is shallow, and it's something I don't usually show on my channel, it's something I don't always do, and that's mount it on a woodworm screw with the lathe spinning. It's probably one of the best ways to actually do it. It gets it started well, but then you stop the lathe and tighten it up. Because this bowl is light and shallow, the woodworm screw is a good choice for holding it in place. This project this week is going to focus as much on the finish as it is on the actual wood turning. I have a friend who's a beekeeper and I make my own DIY abrasive paste and polish and I have a video on that if you're interested in how to make that but I'm going to show that in this video how I use it and you'll see what a great job it does in shining the bowl up. Thank you to Daniel for supplying the beeswax and I'm sure it will be put to good use. This bowl is going to have a very flat bottom, so you can see here I'm just starting to flatten that off. I'm also going to remount it when I turn it around so I can work on the inside with a mortise. I don't usually use a mortise. I usually use a tenon. A tenon will be stronger, but again, because this bowl is shallow and a bit lighter, the mortise will work just fine. With the flat bottom, it's nice to be able to pull the tailstock away so I get better access to the bottom. And again, not a problem with this size of a bowl. Yes, you saw that correctly. And one of my viewers noticed that, that uh, the lathe did stop there for a second. My belt is a little bit loose. I need to buy a new one. It's stretched out to the maximum now, but it's still a little loose. The other thing you saw there is I do have a knot on the side of the bowl, and it does go all the way through, but it's not very open. I debated on whether or not to fill it, but in the end I decided to leave it. I don't usually use this on the outside of a bowl like this, but it was doing a good job. I had used my bowl gouge to do all the shaping and then I just switched to my carbide round scraper just to take out any lines that were left behind from the bowl gouge itself. And this did give me a pretty good finish. At this point, I could start sanding probably at 120 grit. Uh, it's fairly smooth. Just the same, I do go over with my negative rake scraper as I usually do, and that gives me even a smoother surface. I'm really trying to focus on getting a better tool finish and less sanding. As myself, as most wood turners, I don't enjoy sanding. One of the things here I want to check with this flat bottom is that, that it is flat. It's a fairly big bottom and I do not want the bowl to be rocking. Right now it seems flat, although I do have a little nub right in the center. So once I remove that, I think it'll be flat. Again, there was that knot that you saw, which in the end I decided to leave as is. Here I'm just using my caliper gauges to mark out the mortise. Again, not a usual way that I do things, but uh, in this case, it, it'll work out fairly well. One of the things that's very important, especially on this small mortise, is that you have a nice sharp edge and that it's got a bit of a dovetail to it, as my jaws do. So I use my skew chisel, which has got the right slope for it to match the dovetail. Again, because this mortise is going to be very shallow, therefore I want to make sure that it matches 
what is going to be on my jaws. Here I start sanding. I know I said I could start at 120. I did start at 80, just here on the bottom. Again, the bowl was fairly smooth. I probably didn't need to start that course of a grit, but it's what I had on hand, so that's where I begin. As a turner, don't feel ashamed if you do have to start with a lower grit. It depends on the wood. It depends on the job. You just need to start with the grit that you need to start with. In the end, you'll have the same product as anyone else. I did have a small amount of tear out on the end grain on the two sides of the bowl. So I did use some sanding sealer. Sanding sealer does work well. Uh, not only does it help with the end grain, but it also helps highlight any areas that need to be sanded just a little bit more. So I like to apply a sanding sealer to the complete bowl. I usually do this right after sanding to the first grit. If that's 80, then I apply it then, and then finish sanding with the rest of the grit. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I uh, am going to show how I apply and use my homemade abrasive paste and polishing paste. Here I'm just applying the abrasive paste, and I do that with the lathe off. The reason being, if the lathe was turning, it would tend to just throw it off. So I start off by applying it with the lathe stopped, and then turn the lathe on and rub it in. You'll also notice here that once I rub it in, I will switch to clean sections of the cloth. What you want to do is, once you start applying the abrasive paste, you want to remove it all. So by changing to a clean piece of cloth, I keep my eye on it, and I keep rubbing it until the cloth is clean, and then I know that I've removed the abrasive paste. Next, I switch to the Next, I switch to the polishing paste. Again, I have a video on this, and you can go back and take a look at it. The abrasive paste is one part diatomaceous earth, one part beeswax, and five parts mineral oil by weight. The polishing paste is the same, except I do not put the diatomaceous earth in. And in this case, I use one part beeswax and only four parts mineral oil. Again, you can go back and watch that video. And again, I'd like to thank Daniel for supplying the beeswax for, for these homemade abrasive and polishing paste. Here I've switched to the inside of the bowl. So I mounted it on that mortise, not tenon, mortise that you saw me make earlier. Again, it's not very deep, but the bowl is light, so I don't need very deep. And I do have my tailstock engaged. It's cutting well. You can see here the shavings that are piling up on my arm and chest. It's, uh, it's cutting quite well. I'm using my bowl gouge and I'm just making plunge cuts and then pull cuts across the surface or starting out at the edge and make push cuts into the center. Here I'm switching to my negative rake scraper. As I've mentioned many times before in my channel, usually after using the bowl gouge, I will take my negative rake scraper and go over the surface just to remove any tool marks that I might have. The more time you can spend at this stage, the less sanding you'll have to do. Here I just use my thickness caliper gauges to make sure that the bowl is uniform. If you're a non-turner, obviously the first thing that attracts you to a bowl will be the visual aspect. Secondly, 
People pick it up every time they run their fingers over it. They're checking for two things. Is it smooth and is it uniform? So even if you don't know that, I'm sure that anytime you pick up someone else's work, those are the two things that you do. As I've mentioned in my channel before, if you're a wood turner, the second thing you do after looking at it visually is you flip it over to look at the bottom to see details of how the bottom is finished. Little things like that. Uh, did someone remove the tenon? Did they sign their work? Did they make the bottom smooth? Which a lot of beginner turners don't do. That's the last thing that's left to do on the bowl and a lot of times they don't take the time to finish it. Again, I don't show it, but I'm just going through the sanding process. Here, starting with 80 grit, working my way up to 600. Once I finish this, then I will apply my abrasive paste and abrasive polish, the same as I did on the outside. So here's the finished product. It's got a nice gloss. The wax does a really good job. It's satiny finished, but yet glossy. You can see some of the features here. There is a knot that's solid, so I was able to keep it into the bowl itself. And here's my logo, which is appropriate for this week, given that I used a beeswax finish and it was given to me by a beekeeper. Hopefully they will enjoy this bowl as a small token of my appreciation, as much as I enjoyed making it.